On today's program, we're going to be doing some pet photography. Woof. Hey there folks, welcome to the Photo Video Show where we explore all things DSLR. I'm your host Mark Puckett and on today's program we're going to be talking all about pet photography. Now pet photography is an interesting niche because everyone seems to have a fur baby or two and most people want some really cute pictures of their furry little loved ones. I happen to have five and to tell you what, they try my patience worse than children. They never do what you want them to do when you want them to do it. And if they do happen to do something cute, you're clearing off slobber from your lens. So when you do pet photography, you need to bring more than just your camera. You need to bring a whole bag of patience. Something I have very little of. So anyway, let's get started. Now starting off, we have Lucian. He's a pit bull, extremely easy to work with. He's a pretty sexy boy. He takes some really good photographs. What I like to do is I like to get down low. I like to shoot at eye level. That way that I can really sort of look and be a part of that animal's perspective. Not to mention this isn't MySpace, so we don't need the MySpace angles going on. So make sure you shoot at eye level. Do not shoot standing up because it always gives it that amateurish uh, hawkeye perspective view that everyone's trying to get away from. Not to mention, when you get down low, you really draw out the animal's individualistic personality. You really get to see who the animal is. Just makes it look overall so much better. Next, it's a great idea to really reduce your f-stop. Go all the way down to a 1.4 or a 1.8 really blur that background out, soften up the rest of the world so that the focus can be 100% completely on the animal in the photograph. And for those that don't already know, here's a pro tip for you. Always expect the unexpected. Animals are always gonna be doing something interesting and different all the time, so you have to be ready. Keep your frames per second burst speed up as high as you possibly can. Just like with the D7000, I can burst up to six frames per second. And that's extremely important when you were trying to capture those interesting and unique personality traits that every animal has. Actually, here's another tip. This is a double. Don't chimp your screen. And chimping your screen means you take a shot, you look at your screen. You take a shot, you look at your screen. Because while you're doing that, you're missing out on opportunities. You're missing out on fun, cute little moments. So don't do that. So that was a two in one pro tip for you. Next, what I like to do is I like to shoot either in the morning or in the evening. That way I can sort of get that side lighting or Rembrandt lighting kind of look. You can also use a white card or a reflector to soften up the shadows. Also, you can use your flash and just ratchet it all the way down to about 1 64th or 1 28th of a second to help soften the shadows as well. Lastly, a great idea is to let the animal have fun. They're probably nervous and they're a bit apprehensive of who you are and what you're doing with that thing in your hand anyway, so allow them to blow off some steam. Nine times out of 10, when you let them do this and you use a zoom lens, you can usually capture some really good candid photographs. As opposed to those overly posed ones that you get when you go to a pet photographer, these are probably some of the more beautiful, more memorable moments that you're going to capture as a pet photographer. Not to mention the clients absolutely love these. Now here are some pictures that I've taken in the past. This is actually my dog. His name is Boo Boo or Boo or Roscoe or Bubba Badass or whatever. Cute boy. I also took a picture of him standing in front of our bay window in the living room. Didn't use any flash whatsoever, just captured him in all his majestic awesomeness. And this is actually what he was doing. Standing, just looking out at the window, hoping there was a squirrel running by. But yeah, you can get some great photos just by letting the animals do their own thing.
And all the same principles completely and totally apply to cats as well. This even includes ones that could eat your face off. This is a snow leopard that I happened to capture at the Louisville Zoo. And if I didn't know any better, I seriously would think that this is the mascot image for Apple's new OS. But little lizards can apply as well. And even the less attractive members of the animal kingdom. So as you can see, it is a lot harder than it looks. You never know what you're gonna get because the pets never do exactly what you want them to do when you want them to do it, and you just go nuts. You go absolutely bonkers, batshit crazy. And I happen to know from firsthand experience that you're probably gonna burn through about three to 500 images just trying your best to get maybe five or 10 decent images that you could use, frame, maybe even submit to some stock photography website or whatever your goal happens to be. At any rate, I hope you guys found this information useful, handy. Please check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Be our friends, be our pals, and don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. So thanks for stopping in here at the Photo Video Show. I'm your host, Mark Puckett. We'll see you guys again next time. See ya!